Hey there, BookTube. How is it going um, <clears throat> today? Today, I'm doing my birthday book haul in case you don't want to watch the um, live stream um, replay from yesterday where I opened a bunch of said packages. <coughs> And um, we ended up spending a lot of time talking about which Oreo is best. Um, and in people conversing with us, um, that seemed to be the highlight of the conversation. And also bacon. So um, if you would rather just see what books I have and not um, go through a um, hour-long video of madness because we were also trying to get Fred to howl and um, things of that nature, then you're in the right place and you could just watch um, this. And I've done a little bit of reading since yesterday and um, I could tell you a little bit more about some of the books. So, First off, do you guys want to hear the song? Book haul! I can't remember what song I used to sing for book hauls. Has it been that long? Well, I turned my head in your general direction. Yeah, okay. So first, I want to show you this cool little um, print Zoe got for me. Um, <clears throat> this is the artwork for the original um, 1895 cover of The King in Yellow by Robert W. Chambers. And I can't tell who the artist is. I can't read it. I would love to do a little research on here. But we have The King in Yellow, and um, he's probably walking through Carcosa. Um, it's just really cool. Um, I've always loved this image. Um, so this is really cool. I'm going to frame this bad pup here. Um, dude, that is so cool. Yeah. Okay. Whoa! Um, I also just spilled a bunch of coffee in a shoe. Um, I will not be drinking said coffee out of said shoe, but um, it is a thing. So on with the books. <clears throat> so, the first is this um, three novel collection of Harry Whittington um, from Stark House. Um, to find Cora, like me, like murder, and body and passion. <clears throat> and there's good old hair on the back laughing it up, going, I write better than all of you. Um, and he's right. It's, it's hard to argue with the guy. Um, so anyway, the reason why I wanted this so bad is because of this story, the like mink, like murder. Um, and again, I explained this on the live stream too, <clears throat> but like me, like murder was never released in America. It was, I don't know if it was written and rejected. I'm sure they go into a lot of detail of, um, uh, the history behind it, but it was published in France and I guess the original manuscript for this book has since been no one knows where the hell it is and so Stark House got um, the French version of this got the rights for it had somebody translate it back to English and then had their editors go um, over it and try to <clears throat> make sure it was as Whittington-esque as um, his books would be. So, um, 
just the idea of a translation of a translation of um, an American author. I'm, I'm very, very intrigued as to how that'll work out. But I haven't read either one of the other stories either. So this is um, just lovely. And look at him laughing at me. <laughs> Fucking dick. Um, <clears throat> so that's really cool. Then, <clears throat> I got one of these. And um, the next two things I'm going to show you um, are stuff you could get on Amazon. They're not that expensive at all. Um, and they're really nicely put together. Um, but the first one here is I watched them eat me alive from the men's adventure library journal, killer creatures and men's adventure magazines. Um, now the men's adventure library journal is um, a group, I think it's just these two dudes right here, um, Robert Deese and Wyatt Doyle. <clears throat> um, they put together these awesome collections. They're good-sized, um, lots of the artwork in here, and they work with the um, writers and the artists and everybody. Look at him, swinging weasels. Um and um, they reprint the stories and reprint a lot of the artwork. Uh, look at that. And they usually reprint the spreads um, that they first appeared in. So for those of you who don't know, um, the Men's Adventure magazines, or the MAMS, for those of you who like abbreviations, look at this dude getting attacked by snapping turtles. Man, hell on earth. What, what do you think of that? Um, <clears throat> these were the... Um, kind of the next evolutionary step in... Um, oh, that's hysterical. In um, the pulps. So, when the pulp started to fall out of fashion um, in probably the early 50s, um, and again, a lot of that is because of um, just the marketplace changing um, after World War II, and also um, the rise of the paperback originals. Um, the men's adventure magazines would have some crazy story like this, but then it would also have stories like, let me see if I could just find a, um, <clears throat> let me see what this is. Uh, how insurance companies rip you off on car repairs. Okay. So there's like an article, um, Strange Commandos Who Stopped World War II's Invasion of U.S. Soil. And that's listed as a true story. So you would have these, like, true stories, articles, um, special fiction, the Tuesday Night Bed Hopper. So it's kind of more risque. Um, and then, uh... Oh, a plane crash survivor's horror in Louisiana swamp country, trapped in the bayou's pit of a million snakes. Ooh la la. Um, and then a shocking expose. I find special talent call girls for the mob. So you have like all these, and then you'll have like an actual, like, a whole like spy novel in there with it or something. So a lot of these stories <clears throat> were told as they, as if they were true. And um, a lot of times they were um, related to, like, this guy's telling this story to this writer, and the writer's writing it for him. 
kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so they had all these um, Gusto, Real Men, Men's Exploits, Champion, um, Men in Conflict, All Man, Rage, um, Men Today. Um, but yeah, so they had all these um, things. And these stories are just like horror stories. It's like, I read the one that the cover photo is for. <clears throat> and it's very short, but it is graphic. Like, um, the coconut crabs can, like, crack a coconut with their claws. So just imagine what they could do to human flesh. Um, but yeah, so it's, and they all are supposed to be true. Like, this really happened to this guy. Um, so it's just good fun. But, um, they're terrifying. <laughs> and, um, so these magazines were, like, really popular from, like, the 50s through, uh, the mid-70s. And, um, they have a lot of different, um, series in this. So you have, like, cryptozoology, um, stories about Cuba, uh, because that was a big deal, um in the 60s um barbarians on bikes bikers and motorcycle gangs uh weasels ripped my flesh um he-men bagmen and nymphos a handful of hell um so they have all these different um things like this this is awesome um, I absolutely love it. I love the size of it. It feels good. Um, these are just great. I can't wait to get more of these. <clears throat> Next, I wanted to grab an issue of the Paperback Fanatic. Um, this is issue 43, which means there's been a couple before this. And... Um, a lot like uh, the Men's Adventure Library, this is available on Amazon. Um, there's a bunch you can get, and this has like full color pictures and black and white pictures, obviously, since I just said full color. The book had to show me what an idiot I am. Um, really cool articles. I jammed through this yesterday. Um, look at that. So let me tell you what the, um, contents of this one is, because this was just like, it was awesome. So it has reviews of a bunch of gold medal books from Paperback Warrior. Now, if you don't know who Paperback Warrior is, um, you can find them on YouTube. But they um, are a website, paperbackwarrior.com, and they review basically men's adventure novels, but all types of vintage paperbacks. And um, they have a podcast, which is epic. It's a very good podcast. Um, but they have put a bunch of reviews for gold medal books on in this issue. Um, and then they have like three articles about Gil Brewer. Um, and Gil Brewer, uh, wrote, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything on here that I've read that you guys might remember. Um, 13 French Street. I was reading that in one of my, uh, try a chapter videos. Um, he's amazing, but. Um, Gil Brewer was once one of gold medal's greatest, but whose inability to drop the sex and kick the booze caused a fall from grace. Um, and then there's another article um, on Brewer's barren years in the 1970s. And then another article 
um, about how Brewer's work was repackaged in Men's Adventure magazines. So if you like Gil Brewer, this thing is like crack, all right? Um, and then we have some stuff on um, Dan J. Marlowe. <clears throat> and there's this great article in here about how uh, possibly the only crime novelist whose research led him to collude with a convicted bank robber. What? Um, tons of reviews. Um, then there's a profile on Charles Williams, who wrote um, River Girl, which I read very recently and loved. Um, and then a visual guide to Robert McGinnis's gold medal covers. So this is kind of a gold medal centric issue. <clears throat> and then um, it talks about uh, the Travis McGee books from um, Gold Medal and much, much more. And this company, the people who do paperback, Fanatic, do other stuff too. Like um, they have uh, another book like this called Hot Lead um, that does westerns and men of violence, which does the men's adventure books um so tons of cool stuff i was actually looking on um where's all that that's an interview with the artist guy um i was looking through their uh oh my gosh okay i need to not just flip through this or else i'm gonna lose it so these are super cool Paperback Junkie highly recommends the Paperback Fanatic. So just keep that in mind. Very cool. Okay, I need a drink of my coffee because I'm, I'm overly excited. Oh, man. Okay. So I've had my eye on this book for quite some time. This is Cinerama. Um slee sex paperbacks of the 60s expanded edition yeah see that yeah so this is from um feral house publishing and um to explain in simple terms that i think a lot of people who watch i can't even show you a lot of the pictures in here this is just um nuts um, there's lots of pictures, guys. Yeah. I better just let you guys hunt this down yourself. But anyway, so this is basically the paperbacks from hell of the sleaze paperback market of the 60s and 70s. Um, and the fifties too. Um, so if you are into like the history of paperbacks and stuff like this, um, I'm hoping that this is going to be, um, essential reading. So, um, I'm just, I'm super excited to dig into that. <clears throat> now the same company put this out and I'm gonna say that I'm a little miffed about something and I'll show you what it is so this book is <clears throat> it's a man's world now um, this is men's adventure magazines the post-war pulps expanded edition also by um, feral house this one is quite large. Um, so you have all the stuff. So you know how I showed you that book that was like, oh, here's a bunch of um, stories of animals attacking kind of thing. This is kind of like the paperbacks from hell of um, the men's adventure magazines, like all the different genres and stuff. Now, why I'm upset about this is this. 
Oh, is that a slip case? No, this is the actual paperback cover. And this is the glue on the spine. And it just came off. So, um, <clears throat> that's kind of janky. So, I'm not thrilled about that. <clears throat> at all. Um, but this is kind of an I don't want to say it's an awkwardly shaped book, but I'm wondering if, like, because the paper in here is so nice, like, I mean, we have, like, giant, thick paper pictorials of all sorts of stuff, you know? I can't believe, like, covers like this we're actually in shops. Look at that. That's freaking nuts. Um, yeah. It's just, it's gorgeous. It is a gorgeous piece here. Oh, sharks. You guys want to see some sharks? Yeah. Now, it isn't just a bunch of pictures. It's, uh, we have um, bits on the people who did a lot of the artwork. Um, a lot of stuff about Norman Saunders in here, who did these awesome cards um, that I think I haven't read this bit yet, but like, like those Mars Attacks trading cards that like Tops did. Oh yeah, there you have a picture of it right here. So yeah. <clears throat> um, just tons of cool stuff. A lot of it too is like um, World War II, um, like how they marketed things to um, people and used um, propaganda to almost. I think. How do you exploit propaganda? I think they did. Um, but then even like the burgeoning, burgeoning, um, stuff about, um, homosexual and lesbian stuff and Nixon and Malcolm X and, um, just nuts. This is just awesome. But I'm really pissed that it came apart when I opened it. Um, Zoe said it was coming apart when she wrapped it, but, um, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> so, super cool. If you're into that historical fun stuff, then this book, this is gonna, this is gonna take a bit. This is the weird, um, edited by Ann and Jeff Vandermeer with, uh, four weird by Michael Moorcock and an after weird by China Mieville. It is 110 stories by an all-star cast of literary legends. Now, um, this is, it, it doesn't, I don't know if it was supposed to or what, but it's kind of like the history of weird fiction. Cause, um, I think the oldest story in here is from like, so it's not really the history, but, um, 1907, I think, is the oldest story in here. And it goes up to 2010. But, yeah, I mean, um, like right here. Let me see if I could read this out to you. Angela Carter, Michael Chabon, Neil Gaiman, William Gibson, Franz Kafka, Stephen King, Kelly Link, George R.R. R. Martin, Hikaru Mirakami, and Mervyn Peake. Um... There's Lovecraft, Clark Ashton Smith, Poppy Z. Bright, Joyce Carol Oates, um, Saki, M.R. James. Um, who else did I see in here? Oh, China Mieville is in here, and Neil Gaiman already said that. Um, oh, Daphne du Maurier. Um, there's just all sorts of stuff. So 
there was a part of me that's like, wow, 110 stories. I could do one of these a week. And this book could fuel me for the next, like, two years. That's crazy. So I might do that. I'm not sure. But yeah, so this seems like a just an awesome tome, like, um, right up my alley. So, um, we'll see. Then, <clears throat> the alluring art of Margaret Brundage. Wait a second here. Oh, okay. I put it over there. The Queen of Pulp Pinup Art. Um, there's actually, here, I'll show you the back too. There's her down at the bottom there. Um, she did all of these amazing Weird Tales covers. Look at that. Um, this is like probably one of my favorites. And it's like the story it's for is kind of like, um, let me see here. <clears throat> and because this was kind of pre censorship in a way, a lot of the stuff she did was very um, uh, I guess what does that say? Alluring. Um, but like she did all of the like Conan um, weird tales covers. Um, and I said it in the other video, like, if you, <clears throat> if you, like, think about, um, like, the look of the 30s, um, a lot of that would probably be, um, her artwork. Oh, man, there's, like, a biography in here. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. Um, but, yeah, like I said, <clears throat> um, she was doing a lot of work in, a, like, a male-dominated field there. Um. And she didn't just do Weird Tales covers, but those are probably the ones that um, she's best known for. And, uh, oh, what was that? Historical Fleece, or Golden Fleece Historical Adventures. Um, I was saying this yesterday, when um, Weird Tales went under... Um, they had all of these giant paintings she did that they would take photos of for the covers. They, they just threw them all away. Shocking, man. Can you imagine? Oh, awful. So anyway, um, got a couple more Conan covers there. Uh... I'm trying to see if they have any other stuff other than the Weird Tales covers on here. Oh, yeah, Magic Carpet. There we go. Um, probably can't show those. Yeah, so anyway, this is just great. Um, so, and I'm excited to learn more about her. Um. Oh, very excited. So there's that. And finally. Whew, for those of you who are fans of awesome, we have the fantastic paintings of Frazetta. And... This book, look at the end papers even. It's kind of pretty. 
yeah, yeah. Um, this book is ridiculously large, but I guess it would have to be. Um, but yeah, we got... Oh, um, lots and lots of stuff. Here's some Edgar Rice Burroughs cover art. This is just amazing. Good luck, folks, because this is going to just be one of those books. One of those books that I'm just going to sit here and flip through all the time. Ooh, some creepy covers. Oh. This is just a really heavy book. An awkward. Um, oh my gosh, look at that. Ugh. So yeah, if you like Frazetta, then um, I don't know why you wouldn't want to have this. Um, this Tarzan stuff. This Conan stuff. <clears throat> There's some Death Dealer stuff in here that I saw. But I just gotta figure out where. Ooh, some more creepy stuff. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, so that's just amazing. So I'm very happy. Um, I made out like a bandit. Um, and yeah. So if you've read any of these, let me know down below what you think of them. Um. And if you've ever ordered a book and the paperback cover just completely came off and the glue didn't hold, um, I'd be interested to hear in what you did. Um, we were thinking about fixing it ourselves, but I don't know if that's the best thing to do there. <clears throat> so anyway, um, for everyone who hung out, um, thank you so much. I had a blast. Um, yeah. Oh, and the link for... Uh, the first novella in the Zombie Zero series. It came out yesterday. It's called The Brain Hunter. It is down below. So go get that. And we will see you later. Bye-bye.